تشقى إلا تذكرة لمن يخشى تنزيلا ممن خلق الأرض والسماوات العلا الرحمن على العرش استوى له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وما بينهما وما تحت الثرى وإن تجهر بالقول فإنه يعلم السر وأخفى الله لا إله إلا هو له الأسماء الحسنى صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Last night we started Surah Taha The first three ayat The first one of course As we said last night It's Taha It's a secret between Allah And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam Or Allah only knows What is the real true meaning of these words Or these letters مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لِتَشْقَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that we did not give you the Qur'an to become a burden for you. إِلَّا تَذْكِرَةً لِمَنْ يَخْشَى It is but a reminder for those who have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And last night we had said that one aspect of the tafsir or the meaning of this ayah is that Qur'an is a tadhkira or a reminder only for those who have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and standing before Him on the Day of Judgment. In their hearts. The other thing is that for whoever the Quran is a tadkira, their necessary feature of personality should be khashiyat or fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which means that, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in other places in the Quran as well, inna ma yakshallaha min ibadihi ulama, a characteristic sign of ulama, the people who deserve to be called scholars or knowledgeable people, is the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fear of dying and standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being answerable for what they are doing. So, a person who is leading people or guiding people in terms of their deen. If they do not have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you can imagine that what are the things that they are going to do to people. They are going to lead them in a way that serves their worldly benefits. And this is, na'uzu billah, what we are seeing today. The ulama, the true ulama in the def- by the definition of the Qur'an are those who have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this Qur'an creates the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. It increases, further increases the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the respect of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hearts as well. There's a hadith that is mentioned under the tafsir of this ayah, which is that on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to the ulama, the people, true ulama, the ulama by the definition of Qur'an, who are the ulama, which is that they will have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hearts. Allah would say to them that I did not put the nur of the Qur'an paraphrasing the hadith, the knowledge of the Qur'an, the knowledge of my word in your chest because I wanted to punish you. Today I will forgive you all your sins and I do not care. So this is a great good news for those people who have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and work on increasing in the knowledge of deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an itself. Then the ayat that we recited today, لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا وَمَا تَحْتَ الثَّرَى For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar-Rahman wa ala al Allah is telling us more about Himself, that He is Rahman, the, more, the, mo, the most merciful, the all-merciful. He has positioned Himself on the Arsh. So don't think by that, that He is only on the Arsh, or His kingdom is run from the Arsh. لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ For him belongs whatever is in the samawat, in the skies, وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ and in the earth, وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا and between them, وَمَا تَحْتَ الثَّرَى and whatever is below the crust of the earth. تَحْتَ الثَّرَى Thara means the wet layer of earth that is closer to the surface. So we know that the earth is very deep, many miles deep. Actually, more than a thousand miles deep. But, Human beings, with all their effort, with all the advancement in science and technology, they have not been able to go past 8 miles, 40,000 feet something. Beyond that, no human being has ever been able to dig into the earth and find out what's the reality of the earth. We encounter such a hard layer that we cannot go beyond. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that for Allah to Allah belongs everything that's in the skies and in the earth and between them and what is below the thara, below the crust or the soft layer of the earth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. وَإِنْ تَجْهَرْ and controls everything. 
and owns everything. وَإِن تَجْهَرْ بِالْقَوْلِ فَإِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ السِّرَّ وَأَخْفَى So when Allah has that kind of knowledge, then don't think that if you say something loudly, only then Allah will know about it. وَإِن تَجْهَرْ بِالْقَوْلِ فَإِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ السِّرَّ وَأَخْفَى If you pronounce the word aloud, then it makes no difference for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He certainly knows the secret and that which is even more hidden than the secret. So the ulama have written that sir and akhfa, sir and akhfa, sir is that thought which a human being has in their mind or in their heart, but they have not related to anybody. They have not expressed it. And akhfa is something even more hidden, which is that thought which has not even come yet to the heart or the mind of a person, but Allah knows about it as well. To Allah, everything is the same. That which is going to happen in the future and that which has already happened. Everything is the same. Night, day, knowledge and no knowledge. These are things for us, seen and unseen. Today, tomorrow, what we are thinking now, what we will think tomorrow, that is, these are all, these are things that apply to human beings and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Allah knows what is Sir and what is akhfa? What your heart has and your mind has thought and not told anybody and that which is going to come in your mind maybe tomorrow or in the future you've not even thought about it. So therefore, when Allah has that kind of knowledge and He knows what is going on in your minds and your brains, then it is a requisite of haya, of having shame and modesty and regard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that one also protects what go, what's going on in their head. <coughs> what's going on in their head. And there's thoughts that come into our head that are stray thoughts that we don't necessarily forcefully bring into our th head. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven those. But those thoughts that we play with in our mind. And for example, some sinful thought about some thing that we think about it, we plan about it. And with that planning, with that thinking, we gain pleasure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept a sin over that as well. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has, as he mentioned, that do, there's a hadith, famous hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that do haya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as is the right of doing haya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Sahaba said that, Ya Rasulullah, we, alhamdulillah, all of us have haya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, not that. Haya is that you protect that which is in your head. And you protect that which is in your stomach which is that you only eat halal. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows يَعْلَمُ sirra wa akhfa. Allahu la ilaha illahu. That is your Lord. He knows everything. He has perfect control. That is your Lord. That is Allah. La ilaha illahu. He is your only ilah. There is no other ilah apart from Him. There is nobody that you can worship or you should worship or that deserves to be worshipped apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He is the one who has perfect knowledge. He is the one who has perfect authority. He knows you inside out. And he's going to take care of you. Lahul Asma ul Husna for him are all the beautiful names. So the Asma ul Husna that generally famously are known that have been extracted from the Quran and uh, generally we see those printed at the beginning of the these Mus'haf uh, of the Quran. Those are the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beautiful no names. Those are the names. We should try to learn those names, at least go through those names. And these tell us more about our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allahu la ilaha illahu, that is the personal name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, the name of Allah himself. But then the qualities, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are explained by other, those 99 names that we uh, read. And we should read each of those and we should, if not able to learn, at least know the meaning of all of those because it tells us more, it introduces us more and makes, uh, makes us acquainted more to our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samiyun alim wa tu alayna inna kanta tawwabun rahim. Allahumma ja'alna min ahli al-Qur'an alladhina hum ahluka wa khasatuk wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqih sayyidina wa lana muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amin. 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 Amin